At the beginning of our training program, uh, I mentioned that by participating in this career experience program, you have started working at APC Shipping Co. Ltd. as a global freight forwarder. That we have created an as an imaginary company. Therefore, we refer to uh, the forwarder as ABC Freight Forwarder. If we continue like this, yes, uh, we have a customer named X and carrier Y and uh, V as a freight forwarder, ABC Freight Forwarder. Okay, and X customer has approved a uh, 140 foot high cube shipment they gave it to us approved by customer X and he or she uh, gave it to us after after the customer uh, gives us this shipment uh, what do we do exactly of course we give it to the carrier for physically transportation so what happened here and what is uh, clearer and easier to understand? We, as a freight forwarder, do not physically uh, transport the company's cargo. We have it uh, transported by the carrier, Y, who has the ship and container. As we briefly mentioned in our uh, previous, in, uh, in our previous general sessions, the responsibilities of an MBOCC are greater than uh, those of uh, other uh, forwarders. As we can see in the picture, in this picture, we, uh, it shows that the forwarder is actually an intermediary. While defining uh, the forwarder, uh, we have seen that it is also called uh, an intermediary in the international arena. How was it defined in the FMC as well? Ocean Transportation Intermediary. As OT, you know, forwarders act, forwarders act uh, as a as a bridge uh, between between uh, customers and carriers, as shown in this picture. And do not physically do not physically transport the goods. Forwarders, also known as ocean uh, transportation intermediaries, uh, defined by the Federal Maritime uh, Commission (FMC), operate as intermediaries in the international uh, transportation process. During this process, they coordinate the transportation, uh, planning of the goods, preparation of documents, customs procedures, logistic services such as insurance and storage. Now, at this stage, I will tell you something else that uh, may uh, sound interesting to you. In this triple relationship and cycle, all parties, all parties are Evade of each other. In this, in this triple relationship and cycle, all parties are aware of each other. That is uh, to say, our customer, our customer, already <clears throat> in contact with us. Okay, and uh, knows that their cargo will be transported by, for example, HAPAC or CMA or MSC or MERSC, and the carrier. Carrier Y also knows that the booking and shipment are uh, from the actual shipper uh, customer X. Okay. Here you can ask another question: If uh, Y, if Y uh, carrier knows the real shipper detail, uh, why do they give a freight rate to a freight forwarder? Why not just uh, work directly with the shipper or with the customer X? In the previous section, we discussed in detail the reasons why an exporter or importer, in other words, a customer, would choose to work with a forwarder. But we didn't uh, touch on uh, why an ocean carrier works uh, with a freight forwarder. Nowadays, uh, working uh, with a freight forwarder is actually the easiest customer type for ocean carriers. Why? Because most ocean carriers, especially global ones, when I say uh, global carriers, I mean uh, companies such as MSC, MERS, CMA, CGM, HAPAC, and so forth, have started, have started to give their services almost 
100% through digital platforms. As you can see here, what does this mean? Almost all of the digital based shipping lines have uh, either closed their local offices or turned uh, them into uh, sales only offices. As we mentioned in the previous section, uh, some shipping lines operate their operation and documentation departments from a control tower in a different country, which minimizes the human factor. Therefore, although it is easy uh, for exporters to make a booking with the shipping lines through their digital platforms, the digital uh, processes uh, and processors uh, are quite difficult and complex, requiring experience. Therefore, although it is easy for exporters to make a booking with the shipping lines uh, through their digital platforms, the shipping process and procedures are quite difficult and complex and requiring experience. Okay, we will see these uh, situations in more detail in the following sections. Yes, you can uh, get a freight code, you can get a freight code and make a booking with shipping lines to digital platforms. However, believe me, believe me, this process is not uh, simple and easy as buying an airplane ticket and check-in. Okay, this is a freight forward operation desk. Okay, uh, but it is really uh, it, is, it is not a really uh, easy it is not uh, easy and simple as buying an airplane ticket yes as you can see trying to work with the carriers without freight forwarders it's true it's really true yes therefore uh, freight forwarders who are experts in managing and handling these processes are the best solution for these reasons. Okay. We are looking at this uh, relationship chart. Uh, let's ask another question. Can the carrier, can the carrier contact X company directly? Do you think they can? Enough. And in your opinion, is this possibility? Yes, uh, the carrier, the carrier, uh, the carrier, the carrier can directly contact company X, and this is actual a common practice. The carrier, yes, okay, carrier Y can directly contact uh, our customer X, uh, and this is actually a common practice. The real question, the real, the real question is until where do we think of this contact is considered a, a common practice where or what is the limit of this common practice where should the carrier stop at you have done loading with uh, this carrier y and the shipments of x customer x uh, are regular and uh, have a certain volume Regular shipments like these quickly catch the attention of carriers. And when our uh, Y carrier, carrier Y, notices this, they can visit our customer X as the carrier uh, and ask a question to the shipper like, are you satisfied with our service for the shipments? you made through ABC shipping forwarder. Are you happy with ABC? Do you have any issues? Are your expectations being met? These are normal questions to be asked by the carrier. However, however, this is okay for the market competition and triangle relationships ethics. Okay, this is okay for the market co competition and triangle relationship ethics. However, if Y carrier goes beyond these questions during the visit and asks such as why do you why do you use a faithful order for your shipments and 
why are you not directly working with us instead of ABC? Why are you not directly working with us instead of ABC? Here, this is not normal and definitely not ethical at all. This is not fair and ethical. If you ask if uh, there is a carrier who does this, I would say yes, uh, unfortunately there is. If you ask if there is a carrier who does this, I would say yes, absolutely yes, unfortunately there is. It's unethical because as you can see in, in this table, I have already brought this cargo to you, to carrier Y, and you have already transported. You have you who carrier Y uh, have, has already transported uh, it as my shipment. Despite this, what are you doing? You are trying to take my job away from me and work directly with my customer. You want to carry your why. You want to push me out of the system. This is unethical. Yeah, you have already, you have already transported it as my shipment. Okay, you are trying to take my job away from me and work directly with my customer. You want to push me out of the system. It is unethical. Indeed, forwarders are uh, also important stakeholders in this industry and it is essential for carriers who behave, uh, to behave uh, ethically in this system and cycle. In the past, in the past, this kind of situations, yes, used to happen uh, quite often. However, nowadays, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the main carriers try to minimize the human factor and provide services through the digital platforms. Therefore, they also see and know that working with a freight forwarder is smoother and faster. Yes, where were we? The carrier had visited our customer and trying to try to bypass us. Okay, try to bypass us, skip us. So what happened next in that situation? Let's take a look again. What happened next in ne uh, that situation? If our customer wanted uh, wanted to work directly with the main carrier, yes, with the main carrier, he would have preferred the carrier. Yeah, it's easy. If my customer wanted to work directly with the main carrier or uh, ship, uh, ship owner, shipping line, he would have preferred the carrier. It's easy. There uh, must be a reason, there must be a reason why they choose to work with a forwarder. When the carrier asks uh, a customer the question uh, I mentioned earlier, what did X do? What did my customer, what did my customer do after the visit? Our customer came back to us and said, you loaded, hey bro, you loaded this cargo with carrier Y, but these guys, these guys came to me and offered to work with them directly by cutting out ABC. Do you see? If our relationship with our customers is good, they will tell us about the situations like this. That's, that's, how difficult and complicated our job is.